Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today I'm joined by Amy, all the way from Northeast Scotland College. Um, it's and I have to say we've had quite a few sessions from Aberdeen and above, so um, it's setting a trend, and we're continuing one. And today we're on the topic of toolkits, digital toolkits, no less. So really, Amy, I'm not going to wait any longer. Tell us more. Will do. Um, thanks for the, the wonderful introduction there. So I'll just go and uh, share my lovely presentation. Um, so yes, uh, as Kenji stated, we're North East Scotland College and we're looking at how the North East Scotland College or NESCO use of digital toolkits to respond to the digital needs. Uh, and this is for our staff and students but our toolkits are also public facing, so they can be used by anyone. Um, so a bit of the agenda, we're gonna look at the start of the toolkit, you know, why, why we decided to create one, um, the development growth, uh, our response to the pandemic. So this is like adding tools and bulking up our existing tools, as well as responding to some new developments. And this, this can include the updates to tools um, and we're looking at as well a CDN landscape review. So bringing it back to you guys. So the toolkit itself came from the launch of the Digital Futures project. Um, so the Digital Futures project, it required recruiting some new staff. One of them was me. Uh, and we had another two digital learning advisors at the time. Um, our kind of aim and goal was provide digital training and support to staff at NESCO. Um, so this really was about boosting the confidence and the skills of staff using digital tools, um, because we found that in many cases, they were used to using kind of paper-based, um, they preferred kind of a, a more hands-on approach rather than using uh, digital stuff. Um, so to do this, we were looking at training and support guides. Um, so this is where the toolkit kind of came into place. Um, so at the time, we were going to replace a wiki space, which was uh, a Blackboard guide. And the wiki spaces, they were basically going to expire. They weren't going to be available anymore. So we needed to come up with something that we could then transfer that information into another uh, appropriate form. So we were looking for appropriate platforms for our toolkit. Um, so the ones that we were looking at were Wix, SharePoint, and WordPress. So when we were looking at these, Wix, we kind of liked it. It was public. Um, it was a paid for site, but it was very customizable. Uh, so we liked to, to try different things on there. We also tried SharePoint. Um, this was internal, so it meant that we couldn't have that public facing element to it. Uh, and it was customizable to a point. Um, I don't know if anyone's used SharePoint back in 2017. It wasn't the best. It was very rigid. Um, and so we weren't as keen on it. We couldn't add a lot of stuff to it. SharePoint now, I will admit, is much, much better, but it still has that internal factor. And we were also looking at WordPress. Um, again, similar to Wix, it's very customizable. It's paid for. We just didn't have as enough skills, I think, to utilize uh, WordPress as well as we could with either SharePoint or Wix. So the current wiki space at the time, it had a lot of Blackboard guidance, um, but we found that there was a lot of other tools that staff were using. Um, so what we started to do as well is we were having team meetings and we were saying to staff, okay, we're gonna create a digital toolkit. What should we include? And we started listening to the ideas that staff were giving us. And we then kind of went back and storyboarded our toolkit. And this is from Way back in the day, this is 2017, our very first storyboard for the toolkit. So we started categorizing the tools and we were color coding them to say, um, you know, the red ones, these are urgent, we need them straight away. So we had lots of tools for assessment. We're in the red because we had assessments coming up, staff are always assessing students. We had Office 365. We were looking at some of our college systems as well. Um, so that was including password management, medial, as well as our college intranet. We had tools for communication. Um, so these were rudimentary back in the day, if you will. We didn't have as much um, need for the communication tools as we do now with the pandemic. But we were looking at certain things and trying to highlight what was best for our staff. So we then managed to create the first version of the toolkit. We ended up going with Wix. 
Um, after a lot of research and testing, we liked it. It was customizable. It was public. It looked creative. It was much more engaging than the old wiki spaces. And it was a big hit, I think, for, for staff um, to look at. They could look at it and easily see what tools they were uh, able to access. When we first created the toolkit, we only had 32 topics. Um, so these were ranging from our VLE, Office 365, and some third-party tools. And we had text and video guides on each of the pages. So they were able to get the support that they needed on the, on the tasks that they would use these for. And um, so looking back at some stats of our toolkit, uh, so this was for the academic year of uh, 1920, we can see um, our, our users is pretty high. We quite like that, our page views, but more importantly, we could actually see which um, pages were getting the most views. Um, so we noticed that Blackboard Collaborate shot up. Uh, and if you look at the year, you can see that that's the year that the pandemic hit us. So around about March, our guides for Blackboard Collaborate, which was the tool that we were kind of promoting at the time as the one that they can use to actually teach from home, it, those views basically trebled um, because of so many people needing them. So we could use this to kind of actually anticipate needs. So by using the tracking that's available in the uh, analytics side of the site, we can see you know, what's our most viewed pages, what do we need to boost, what do we maybe need to look at, um, but also that we have other ways of anticipating needs. Um, so every time a staff member interacts with us, we use a tracking form and it's from JISC, this tracking form. We create a form, we take the details and the details we take our team, we take campus, we take um, how they communicated with us, whether it's through email, teams, face-to-face -face if we're lucky, and uh, what digital tools they've contacted us about today. So this just means that we can actually keep track of okay, we've noticed that our Fraserburgh campus keep contacting us about Microsoft Teams. So maybe we need to create more pages or maybe we need to promote our current pages or even actually just start sending out some promotional materials to this area of the campus, um, put it in our college intranet or whether uh, it could be a newsletter or an email, something to just kind of get the, the news out there. Um, we also have to keep up to date um, so we will look at if Microsoft has any new updates, anything that's relevant to our staff. Um, so recently, one of the new ones was being able to reply uh, in a chat thread. Absolutely love it. Uh, wish we had it you know, ages ago, but that's now in the toolkit, that new feature. Um, so when lockdown hit the pandemic, we had to increase the toolkit offerings. So um, we had text guides, but what we needed was a lot more kind of video. We needed a lot more uh, images as well. Because we weren't sitting face to face with staff, we realized that we actually needed to have more visual representation there. And we also had to increase the guides, um, which were much more in depth for things like Microsoft Teams and Blackboard Collaborate to give staff that 24 um, seven support. So our toolkit 2.0, um, we've got two web links there, and the reason for that is because we ended up using a combination of Wix and Wakelet. Um, so Wix kind of forced a page limit, which was a bit annoying, um, 100 pages, which meant we had less kind of um, real estate to work with. And it also meant less customization if we switched to their dynamic pages. Dynamic pages meant we were kind of stuck in a rigid way, which was that old 2017 SharePoint view that I didn't like. So we ended up using Wix. So Wix, uh, Wix even sorry, Wix is the face, so you can still access the website, uh, and it is a Wix website. But when you actually go into the content, the content is held in Wakelet. And the reason that we like Wakelet is um, it's mobile friendly, it's accessible, it has um, an e-reader available in there, and it's also much quicker to edit. So with this Wakelet body, um, with all our content in there, we can actually expand our toolkit. So we ended up with 47 tools. These are the tools that are regularly used by our staff. And these tools have to up to 90 guides. So things like Blackboard Mobile will split off to about five different guides. Collaborate has four different guides uh, and so on and so forth. So we can get a little bit more in depth and give them much more um, kind of bespoke uh, knowledge on these so they can look for a specific thing. 
for Microsoft Teams, they don't need to learn everything about Teams. Maybe they just want to focus on chat. They're able to do that now. So it's much more um, streamlined and easier to, to navigate for them. Also, because we were using Wakelet, we could actually add a little bit more. So we had a lot more text, video, um, images, and PDF. And we started creating our own YouTube channel so that we can create our own videos as well um, to make them much more uh, kind of personalized to our staff. So looking at the previous academic year, um, we had the previous year down at the bottom there with 3,000 uh, users and 5,000 um, sessions. If we look at the most current, and I say this as most current last year's academic uh, year, we can see that we did have a kind of an increase there with our users and our sessions. Page views dropped. And the reason page views dropped is because half of our pages moved over to Wakelet, but it's still actually reasonably high, um, which we were very surprised about. We had much less pages in Wix because uh, the, the analytics are coming from Wix here, but we, we have um, quite a lot. And again, when we look over at the, the highest ones, it's Blackboard Collaborate um, and people accessing the student guides shot up as well. So we had a lot more students that used to get the face-to-face -face kind of support from their lecturer, unable to get that because of the pandemic, using the toolkit a lot more, uh, especially for those Blackboard guides as well. So it was really nice to see how heavily used it was, even though we've moved a lot of our content. Uh, and we're looking at some stats here. So, so far, uh, and again, this academic year, we're only two months and a bit in, we still have quite a lot of usage and we can see some of the tools that are coming up already. The student guide's quite high there in, in fifth position already. Um, so with a lot of new students coming in, they're able to come in and get help and get support on using things like Blackboard. Um, so Wakelet, these um, are the toolkits essentially. So while we have the Wix website that they can access and gives us um, the, the face, there is actually this, this side and this view of it here. And we use the Wakelet toolkits for a number of things. Um, they're, like I say, they're accessible. They're also very easy to create and to set up. And um, it's easy to, for staff to have an account and to follow these, to like them as well. And I'm just gonna quickly kind of cover these two here. On the left-hand side, uh, we've got this new toolkit. It's our, our latest one for Blackboard Ultra. And this only covers the Ultra view of Blackboard. Uh, and this toolkit is bespoke, it's customized to our staff and how our staff and students use this tool. So it complements the Blackboard help site, but this is just for our kind of staff. It's gonna be a little bit more um, Nesco aligned, although other people can use and access this, it's gonna mention a lot more Nesco products than if they went to the normal Blackboard help site, which would be very kind of generic. Um, so it's very, very contextualized. Uh, and this was in response to, um, I think it's just over 80% of our staff are now using the Ultra View. Um, so we, during the summer, we created this toolkit, the Blackboard Ultra toolkit that's on the left. Uh, it's ready for them so that when they came back from the summer, everything was there and ready. So they would be given the new course view. They would then be given the toolkit. They can learn how to add, edit, um, how they can create assessments, everything was in there for them. And there's even the student side as well. So when their students come and they're new, they can actually send them the, the link to the tool can say, look, there's the whole student view. You can learn how to use this side of Blackboard. And it just kind of takes the onus on them having to show the student. The student can have that kind of um, support and guidance with the toolkit. On the right hand side, we actually have the main toolkit, the Digital Futures Toolkit. And this covers pretty much everything that our staff are using, Office, uh, all the different Blackboard uh, things like Collaborate, Blackboard Ally, um, Original, Blackboard Ultra is in here too. And we also have the um, Blackboard mobile app. Because we found that when a lot of our students were coming to us um, during the pandemic, they didn't have a suitable device, like a, a laptop or a PC. They were actually using mobile phones. So we had to increase our um, guides on using the, the tools for uh, mobile and mobile applications. Uh, we also have a lot of stuff to do with our college systems, digital skills, accessibility has become a big um, 
big kind of area for us as well. So there's a lot on using um, subtitling, how to create those and using accessible settings on your PC, as well as uh, creating accessible materials in there. So basically a, a member of staff could start at the college today and use most of this toolkit to actually get up and running uh, without having to come to any induction sessions. They could just have access to this. Uh, and again, with both of these, these are public, so they can be shared, they can be followed. Uh, you can even click on the toolkit uh, items and start liking and reacting to them as well, which is what we like. We do see occasionally uh, someone will like a, a part of a toolkit, which is always quite nice. Um, these aren't the only toolkits that we have at the college. There are a number more, uh, a few more. Um, student advice and support, they have one, it's called the final hurdle, uh, and it has student support tools, tools on finance, study, um, study skills, employability, uh, volunteering. Um, the Student Association have one. It covers mental health and well-being, safety, respect, uh, and the different clubs and societies that they have. And we've also seen the library start to develop one, and it has um, resources on how to use the, the uh, e-digital resources. It's also got a um, staff recommended reads. So I think Jill from our, our library service, she will recommend a book every now and again in there, which is always really nice. It's nice to see interaction. And we also had um, less of a toolkit, but more of a fun thing at Christmas. We used to do Sparkle at Nesco. Um, so when we were face to face, it, it included um, little sales and fairs and performances from our staff. Unable to do that, they decided to do it via Wakelet. And we, we had videos, we had recipes were shared, we had um, little crafts were shared on there. So it was really nice to see um, staff coming together using a digital kind of form like this, a uh, toolkit, if you will. Um, so kind of lastly, leading on to the or, uh, one of the, the toolkits that we created, and I think got us kind of in this, this sphere, was the CDN review. Um, uh, which was the, the Scottish landscape review for the, the pandemic, um, including the research of the digital skills that college staff should have um, when dealing with uh, having to work from home. Um, so the digital capabilities that, that we should strive to have. Um, there, the framework then became a skeleton, which we then added as part of our toolkit. Um, and it was to kind of enable staff to be a bit more aware of what skills they, they require, but then also show them how to do it. And uh, we should be able to, if I click on this, go and actually visit the toolkit. So hopefully you can still see this. Um, so we have our two baseline capabilities. These came direct from the Scottish Landscape Review. So this isn't any content that, that we created, um, but we have attributed to, to the CDN uh, review here. Um, what we, we basically did was we outlined the um, capabilities. So for example, for the deliver online sessions, synchronous and asynchronous, we just gave the outline here, scheduling a lesson, preparing a welcoming and supportive environment, et cetera. But then we also created a guide. So it's great, we can actually see, okay, these are the things I'm expected to do as a lecturer, but let's go and see how I can actually do these. So then staff could then click on this and get the, the guides. And this would link to our toolkit, they would link to videos, uh, they'd link to text guides, images, et cetera, that they can then follow to learn how to actually be able to do this just wait for it to look. there we go so scheduling a lesson we've got kind of a number of ways that we would expect staff to do this via collaborate or via microsoft teams um, preparing welcome and supportive environments so this could be creating journals discussions uh, video boards anything like that or even just providing nice announcements in in blackboard our vle the key features of online learning platforms, so share your screen. We, we basically included all of our links that we have in our toolkit in this area. So it meant that they can then actually go and support themselves. They can learn what the baseline is and then go and support themselves and, and discover how they can actually um, meet that baseline. 
Uh, so that's what we, we did for all of this, for both our teaching and uh, support staff. Uh, and again, if we just click on the, the support staff baseline, we can see we've, we've got a similar thing here where they can go in uh, and they would be able to then go and find out and learn. OK, so I need to um, let's do the communicate one, communicate and share content with others. How do I go and do that? And there's a whole toolkit which links to our our areas in the toolkit, showing them how they can they can do this. So the reason that we like our digital toolkits is because we can be so responsive. They can be linked to anywhere. Um, if, if a staff member contacts us, how do I send an email? I can give them this link. They can go and uh, review this, go and read about it, and they can learn how to do it without me having to sit by them side by side uh, the whole time. Uh, there's less hand-holding involved here. And it's also quite nice because we can have people like these uh, and we can see how well they're, they're being um, responded to. I, I always do like a little nice little love heart there. Uh, and it comes up in our notifications. We can see, oh, they've been liked by X many people. And I think there's new analytics coming to this soon. So we'll be able to gather that data in a much nicer way as well. Um, so with digital toolkits, it's just one of those great things that we can respond to pretty much anything as soon as it happens. Uh, and it's, it's much more responsive in that way. I think that's the, the end of my presentation. If, there, if there's any questions, I'm sure there's probably been some in the chat, but I've not been able to see them. That's brilliant. Um, Amy, that, that, that's fantastic. It's so, so definitely, I have a bunch of questions here. I know we're running short of time here, but um, we'll, we'll continue the conversation after the recording. Yeah. The, so, when there's so much there and I, I like the idea obviously when we were looking at the baseline and we were talking at colleges a sense of prioritizing what comes first is a really important point so how and another thing you were talking about is is also time time every, everyone's time is precious so in that sense of prioritizing and time what what's your tips for staff at Nescol when it was what comes first and how do you do everything at once when you have when time is so precious I think when what comes first is you kind of have to sit down and think well what are your priorities um for teaching so uh, what, what are your priorities for the day even sometimes so um for for our staff uh they're expected to use the VLE so those were our main priorities, have as much as possible for the VLE that they're using. If they can get as far as uploading content, that kind of eases their day. And if they can see, OK, that's how I upload content, um, that's great. And then it's, it's kind of delving into once you've got the baseline uh, and kind of we've always had, it's never been written down, but we've always had an idea of what the baseline is. So being able to add a content, add a test, and maybe schedule an online session is kind of where we're at for a baseline. Then we're looking at extras. So that could be something like creating something in H5P and having that in your course. It could be something like um, having a video assignment. That's when we start looking at, okay, well, once you've met the, the baseline and understand the baseline, we can start building on those skills. And so that's, again, something that we did with the toolkit. We had those baseline um, guides in place to say this is where you start but then also here's some extra once you're ready to kind of move on with that and and again once we had those in place we started adding extra and we still add extra stuff to this day you know we still have staff coming to us with ideas I've had three I think recently I've got dot storming um whiteboard dot chat and another one so they'll be getting toolkit pages created for them um soon so we still have staff who suggest tools to us um, and we, we just we keep adding to the toolkit as much as we can. Yeah. And, and the idea of the toolkit is especially powerful when, as you were talking, um, explaining earlier, you, you said there are three members of staff in the core team there. So how, how do you build that sense of community and how does the community support itself when, when people need that assistance? Yes. Um, we're, we're very lucky in that uh, our team are 
basically we are the induction training for a lot of the digital tools. So they, they in some cases on day one, see us, uh, whether it's face to face back in the day or virtually they see us. Um, so already we're kind of the, the person to turn to for digital help. Uh, and the thing that we do when we do induction is we actually also send them during the induction, the links to relevant. So uh, one of the first inductions that we do is Office 365. Uh, and we, we show them how to use OneDrive, how to use um, some of the new features that you get with Office 365 that aren't available in, because we've got quite an antiquated system of Office 2016 for our desktop versions. Um, so we, we give them then the toolkit guides. So once they've had Office, they get the Office toolkit guide. We then do remote working. So that includes Teams and Collaborate. We then give them those two guides. So we're reinforcing the whole time that while we're here as a, as a team, and there, there are three of us, we also have guides online. So they know, right, well, when I can't turn to you guys at eight o'clock at night because I need help, I can go and visit the toolkit. So it's, it's just knowing that we are there to support them. We're not saying never speak to us and just use the toolkit. But what we are saying is when we're not available, there's this toolkit. And if you're struggling, have a look at the toolkit, then come speak to us, that kind of thing. Um, and we find that does happen um, quite a lot. It's, it's really good to see that staff are saying, oh, I've used the toolkit or even better. I like it when they say, oh, I've given the toolkit to my students. That's the, the best thing they can say usually in, in my case is that knowing that they know it exists and that they can give it to their students um, as well. And it's, it's fantastic that you've opened it up, that you've made everything so accessible. So, yeah. you, you know, there's, there's a lot that I'm going to revisit here <laughs> and dig through. Although I have been following the Digital Futures Project, you know, for well, since it started. Oh. Really. <laughs> so, uh, so we have time perhaps for, for one quick question before the recording ends. So does, does anyone here have a question for, for Amy? Uh, I wouldn't mind popping in. Um, if, uh, and it follows on very nicely from what you're saying. Have you seen, as the, this has progressed, a change in the uh, demand for one-to-one um, -one support um, or help desk tickets or the other forms? Um, we, we've noticed different trends, uh, essentially, in what is being asked. Um, so before pandemic, we, we had kind of, I, I wouldn't say there wasn't a generic query, but the way that it's changed, the communication and, and what's being asked has changed is, is definitely um, a lot. Of, we get a lot of staff asking now, um, you know, oh, I can do collaborate or I can do teams, but I want to make it more interesting. So they want to actually know now a lot of the new tools. Um, so I would say before we had a kind of a, not, a, not an inversion, but there was definitely a bit of pushback. You know, I teach face to face. I'll upload my PowerPoint every week. That's enough. Uh, and now we get staff who were in that kind of mindset who are like, oh, I teach online uh, and I've got all my PowerPoints, but I want to make something interactive. I want the students to engage. Uh, and it's really great. And so that's when we can refer to the toolkit and we go, well, okay, we've got a number of tools here. Have a look, see which one you like. And we can actually do a bit more in-depth training with you then. So we've noticed that um, we still get, we still have, um, people asking for training uh, and we still have people um, wanting us to, to do to do um, sessions with them. But what we find is that people are definitely more confident in asking for new things. And um, before it was like, I just want to know how to do the thing I already know how to do, but tell me that I'm doing it right. They want that reassurance. Now people are like, oh, I'm, I know how to do that. It's fine. I want to know, know new things now. Um, so it's been really great to see people being a bit more confident. And, and it's brilliant to see that the digital future is really with us now. <laughs> so oh, that's all we have time for in this recorded segment. Um, but Amy, thanks as always. And, and we'll be seeing you back for another future digital, um, <laughs> virtual bridge session in the very near future. But until then, um, as always, everyone, thanks and stay safe.